Hello my friends, look what I got. I'm going to do a review today, not about this book, but about this book, which is the Affinity Photo Workbook. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria, and I want to thank my patrons for supporting my channel and making these videos possible. Thank you very much and let's get started. So, um, you might know that the makers of Affinity Photo also created a book about Affinity Photo. This is the book and this is not a paid advertisement. I don't get any money for that. There's not even an affiliate link for this video. So this is my honest opinion. But at the same time, this could still be seen as an advertisement because I'm presenting the product. But this is my honest opinion. So I want to go with you through the book from the start to the end, explain what's good about it, what's bad about it. If you just want to hear if you should buy this book and in which cases you should maybe not buy this book, I will have a link in the video description with the time code where you can find my final result, uh, like um, in a short minute or something like that. Okay, so let's get started. What I really like about this book, and this is already in the title, is that this is a workbook. This means there's a lot of work examples in here, projects that you can follow, and this also includes the files that you can download from the internet, and it has an introduction to the software. Um, the thing is, this is not every detail of the software explained. So this is not like a handbook where every little setting and every little nudge and cranny of the software is explained. They give you um, an overview of the software, the, they give you a basic core skill explanation and then they go into the different creative projects. But I can assure you that even if a big, as a beginner, you should be easily possible and able to follow all of their projects because they go step by step. So let's look into the book and we want to start here, basically at the beginning. So you can see here that every little, um, not every little, but uh, they explain the tools very nicely. So you see here's a list and every tool has their little explanation. And what I really like about that is that these explanations are really to the point. So for example, I'm reading to you here the crop tool. The explanation for the crop tool is removes areas of an image for practical reasons or to improve composition. Keyboard shortcut C. And that's it. And there is not like a long elaborate explanation about the crop tool and all the kind of things. It tells you what it does and bam, and you can go and use it. I really like that because you can use it to just look up, oh, what is this tool doing? So that's very nice. Let's go to the next page and there we can see, for example, different uh, menu windows. Here is one menu window and every little step of that is a clay, uh, is um, explained. So this is about the effects panel for the layers. I think I should speak a little bit lower. I'm getting too crazy right now. So for example, here it says inner shadow. Adds a shadow inside layer contents edges. Also very to the point, easy to understand. No fuss, just to the point. This is really nice. Uh, let's go to the next part. So the first part of the book is just about explaining the technical details of these things. This is what I showed you right now. But the next part, and that's important, and this is what they tell you at the beginning of the book, is um, you should read the core skills because you need them for the project. So the next part, as you can see here, and it's really beautiful designed uh, throughout all of the book. So this is the start of the chapter for the core skills. That's very nice. And we are going to start, um, I'm just showing you examples of the core skills because they show a lot of different core skills in here. One, for example, is changing the color intensity. And as you can see, this is done with beautiful examples. And I really like that because I want to have a learning book that's also inspirational, creative, where you think, hey, wow, I want to try this. And this is just a technical explanation about how to change the color, but still they went all the way to create an interesting, uh, creative and inspirational picture. So that's really cool. That's something I like. Let's go to the next part. So we go through the core skills. I'm not gonna explain all of the core skills, they just show like, for example, here's another core skill. They show you how to do selection of hair. Sorry for the reflections there. We have a little bit less reflection. So how do you select hair or complex patterns? 
uh, from the background. Another important core skill, of course. Um, so the explanation of uh, the tools and the explanation of the core skills is about that much of the book, so you have an idea. After that, it's going to go right into the projects. And the projects are split up between um, like interesting projects that almost every photographer wants to try. So it's a really great selection of ideas to delve into and I will show you every single of those ideas. And uh, the next one is professional or commercial use of photography, which I also like because they tell you, like, you get to understand what is the difference between a normal, like, hobbyist photo for at home for your own creative purposes and uh, a commercial use, uh, and commercial in this case means things like advertisement and layout and stuff like that, so uh, you want to use it uh, for book covers, for example, one example. And then after that they also have some creative effects, I think, there they could have done a little bit better, but mm, it's still you get an idea about creative uses. So let's go into the, and they call this enthusiast projects, which is very nice. Um, so this is another thing I really like about the book, uh, that they, they um, really looked into these little details and um, with the wording, because wording is important because you want to feel um, taken serious as a person, you want to feel like how can I say? Respect it. So, and enthusiast clinks, uh, sounds nice. Clinks? Uh, Kling is like German. Um, it's klingt. Klingt. Uh, okay, so let's go with the first project. And this is about landscape photography. So they selected topics that are important to almost any photographer out there. And of course, most of us are going to photograph a landscape um, at least once in their life and here is explained how you make it look nice, make the colors punchy, give it a nice feel. So of course this is just one kind of look for a landscape, there can be a lot of looks. So, um, And this is kind of the limitations that you have with the book that of course there is just limited space, so you can just show a select uh, choices of ways how to do that. So in this case one way how to edit landscapes, but it's beautifully explained on the pages. Uh, let's go in here and look a little bit. You see here, for example, right away curves and they tell you how you make the landscape look nice by using curves and how to understand them. So that's pretty cool and a lot of people have a hard time understanding curves. So I find that a great starting topic. The next one, wow, the uh, light is going dark here, that's crazy. Okay, uh, the next one right away is how you have uh, to create, uh, or not have to create, but how you should create a, a long time exposure picture. So this is also a nice tutorial. I think everybody likes these kind of waterfalls where you have this long time exposure and it's flowing and the water looks soft and it's dreamy and it's something that everybody wants to try in their life at least once. So they explain how to do that and how to edit it so it looks cool. By the way, I'm looking at my screen, not at my camera. Sorry for that. I should look at you, not the screen. Okay, let's go for the next one. Another favorite topic a lot of people really like. HDR, there we go. So they explain how to do that. And what is bracketing? If you know that word, so this means for HDR you have to have different exposures. So you take um, three to five pictures and they are a little bit underexposed, a little bit overexposed, and then you combine the pictures and they tell you how to combine them so it looks good. So that's nice. Okay, let's go to the next one. And that is going grayscale, another favorite topic and every photographer at least once wants to try going grayscale because it's more artsy, it looks more uh, elegant, stuff like that. So grayscale or black and white photography is a really kind of cool way to photograph and they explain to you how you can do that. I really like that. You can see here, they show you different tools and stuff. So how to do the settings, what to look out for. That is really nice to have and again, like I said, where, where's the picture? Um, they, well, not here maybe. Let's take the next one. Here we go. It's called Long Calling One. They have really nice pictures, you see, from architecture. So these are inspirational. You look, and I like the book. I, I was looking through the book and I was like, hey, 
I should do this again. I should go out there and take these kind of pictures because I haven't done it for a long time. It's really fun. And the books, the book makes it fun again. You know, you look at it and you're like, ooh, creative, experimental, arty. It's like, wow, let's try this. It's good. Uh, so this is called London Calling One. And again, like it's a creative title. So they, are just, they just didn't call it a uh, black and white architecture technique guide, like you go to sleep reading the title. It's called Long Calling. That's nice. It's creative. So um, let's go to the next one. And the next one is um, Illuminating Big Cities. Another favorite. I think everybody loves night, night photos of nicely lit cities, big cities with the cool lights and it's adventurous and great and uh, here we have London, so again, this is part of London Calling 2, and yeah, it's nice. Again, like I said, the selection of the things that they present to you as enthusiast projects is something that most people would be into, so, um, and it's also very, uh, how can I say, very easy to explain, so you can really follow that, which is also nice. Um, the next one here is called Mother of Millions. Great title and this is about, uh, what is it called again? Um, focus merging. Focus merging, focus stacking, stuff like that. So basically what that means is you take, um, because when you have a macro picture, uh, the focus is on a very, very uh, thin, um, how can I say, um, cut of the, or a very, very small area of the picture. So you want to focus on different areas of the picture. And afterwards you stack all these pictures together. So you have sharpness over all of the subject. In this case, a beautiful flower. That's nice, interesting technique. And um, yeah, it's, it also makes, uh, um, how can I say, it makes macro photography a lot easier uh, because it's really hard um, to take these kind of photos and you could do it with long time exposure and a lot of experience and stuff like that. Um, but then there is wind and the sun is changing and stuff like that and it's really hard to do that. Uh, and with focus stacking it's super easy because you just take a bunch of pictures and then you stack them afterwards. So bam, there you go. Next one, portrait pictures. So that's also nice how to shoot them and how to edit them. And by the way, this is the part for enthusiasts. And oh no, it's not, sorry. Ah, I, I'm sorry, I, I jumped over this page. So now we are in commercial photography. Wow, sorry, <laughs> I almost missed that step. And right away, the first part of course in commercial photography is portraits because portraits are important for a lot of reasons, not just your passport, but also, I don't know, marriages and advertisement and love photos, stuff like that. So love, uh, I mean love, like you you give a nice photo to your loved um, husband or something uh, for uh, whatever. Okay, so, and what I liked about this chapter is um, that they say editing the picture so it looks beautiful, but at the same time natural. And that's an important part because this is, uh, it's very easy to get crazy with editing uh, pictures, taking out the person of the portrait that's not good uh, by editing it too much and make it super extra hyper aesthetic uh, but losing all of uh, the humanity in the person that's not a good thing and they say right away no natural it has to be natural you want to still feel the person in the picture while looking at it and at the same time, you want to remove some blemishes and make it look more beautiful and also adapt it a little bit more to how your eye actually is seeing the scene. Uh, so, it, uh, for example, um, uh, getting rid of a little bit of overexposure, stuff like that. You can see here uh, this kind of selecting the areas who are overexposed, stuff like that. So, good, good stuff, good stuff. Okay, let's go to the next one. And again, something a lot of people want to try not just for commercial purposes, but of course also in commercial photography, this is panoramas of landscapes and how to edit them to look beautiful. And what I like about this is that they not only explain to you how to do these panoramas, but they also go and tell you about small details. So there's attention to detail, uh, like for example, making the mountain uh, ridge a little bit more uh, beautiful by deleting small um, arrows from the picture. You can see here, um, as a little detail, you wouldn't even notice it in the panorama, but still they look in there and say, hey, yeah, you should probably fix that so it's 
because for professional use, for commercial use, it has to be perfect. It has to be like, Mwah! so you can use it in advertisement. And this is why those things are important. Okay, let's go. And by the way, I also, um, I like the differentiation because a lot of people don't know that. Like, um, I was talking with my mother, uh, she's, uh, traveling the world for 25 years. Uh, she took hundreds of thousands of photos and uh, she says, hell, but don't you think I photograph like a, uh, like a photographer from National Geographic or stuff like that? And say, no, uh, because the reason, the difference is she is taking uh, photos for private purposes and the, these uh, photographers are taking them for, for professional purposes. And um, the, the big difference is that you have to be able to use it in different formats like a magazine cover or a page it has to fit into the layout so you have to think about a lot of things uh, from the composition of the picture stuff like that by the way I should make a video about that topic really interesting topic um, and here right away we have covers speaking about the devil um, here you have um, not only how you select the picture for your cover, also how you edit it. And by the way, when you see here this guy has a flashlight, they create the flashlight in Affinity Photo. Really cool. They show you how to do that. And you can see here on the screen, come on, get sharp. There we go. The backside and stuff like that of um, our book cover. And also uh, here you can see about the font choices. So this um, font is called Antonio, which is um, interesting enough, also the name of my brother. I have a brother, by the way. And um, here you can see how they edit in um, the flashlight for the guy, because he's just walking and then suddenly he has a flashlight shining. So that's really cool also. Another thing that I really like, sorry for the light going up and down and up and down, not very professional, but it's YouTube, come on, relax. <laughs> so the next thing is food photography. And I think a lot of people like that too, not only because um, they want to be food photographers for, I don't know, a big company, but also because Instagram, you know, you want to have some great photos and here they show you how to do them. By the way, I want to point out this is fake. Yes, it's real cheese, but they edit it in afterwards. So there's a lot of steps to it and I like what I really like about that is that they give you a glimpse about the behind the scenes. Come on, sharpen, sharpen camera. You can see here the sandwiches on a little um, stick, uh, so you can take photos uh, of it. You don't have to hold it, stuff like that. And then all these different parts are edited together in post, of course. And they show you how to do the selection and the editing. And again, small details. You can see here. They are, do you see the selection lines? They're selecting the bread and then they add the cheese and they use some warping on the cheese uh, to make it more cheesy and gooey and tasty and you just want to eat it. It's like, looks good. And this is, this is the purpose of this kind of commercial photography to make you hungry and tasty. And, and by the way, this is a thing I want to point out right now it has nothing to do with the book, but a lot of people don't understand why does uh, uh, advertisement photography look different from the product? Because the photography wants to tell you how it tastes in your mouth, but you can't photograph that. So you have to transfer it into the picture. And this is why what you see in the picture is the taste not the product. So that's a difference. And this is why the cheese here is so gooey in the picture, by the way. And I'm, wow, sorry, I'm talking too much. Now we have the creative effects and techniques. Also an interesting chapter and also nice techniques use some of which you might have seen on my channel. For example, double exposure, really cool. So uh, they explain how to do that. And this one is a really creative one. I like that mountain as the hat or the hair of the woman. So a really, really nice project again. And here is the one where I would say you should have left it out of um, the book because this is like, I'm sorry for the guy who created this, but the effect just looks bad. It doesn't look good. Don't put it in the book. And then we have, wait, uh, where's the end result? Uh, there, with this font here and that and no, just no, it doesn't look good. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. And thank you for sending me the book and everything, but this, I have to point out some bad sides too, and this is really a project I think shouldn't be in the book. Um, but the rest of the book, really cool. Uh, oh, by the way, there's another one here, and this is about macros. And 
I'm not sure if the guy created the macros or um, uh, or not, or if these are the macros that you get with the uh, with the software. Um, but from the examples, you can see that the macros, well, not you can do better by adjusting them yourself. So yeah. I, I think you can get better macros uh, uh, and apply them in a better way. So this is maybe not the best advertisement for how to use macros. Um, but of course, the idea of macros is important. And basically, I think you should use macros for recording your own stuff, uh, your own creative ways and then using them on your photos so you can work quicker and you have a better workflow and your workflow is more streamlined. You shouldn't maybe um, use other macros or at least only use them when you really, really like them and think the results are good. Okay, there we go. And the next one is, by the way, composition. And this is my favorite project in all of the book because it's really creative, it's really artful, it's beautifully done. Um, and by the way, when you look at this guy, so this is the this is the starting point, and not even the starting point because this is already combined from different pictures, and you can see uh, that this guy. Uh, where do we have a good look look how he looks at the start and then they edit it so beautiful with all the light in there So you can see there is not this light in there So this is all photo effects uh, to have this light shining onto the guy really cool Really nice project. I really enjoyed that and the last one. I also very very much enjoyed here you go, and this is how you create hair, beard hair. So you make another artificial beard uh, on the uh, in Affinity Photo to put it on the on the face of the guy. Uh, where's a good example? You can see here they created this beard brush, and you can paint it onto the face of the guy. So wow, that's a cool technique. Also, one uh, I want to use in one of my tutorials. I have uh, I have planned to do this for a long time, but I didn't come around to it. But it's really nice. Uh, to do this kind of thing. So uh, this was basically the last one in the book. So the, the last thing I have to say, and this is also really cool, you can see here, you have tear out cards with all the shortcuts. You can put them uh, on your, well, desk, or you can take them with you without taking the book with you. And those are for different um, uh, operating systems. So you have one for Mac and then you also, or yeah, you have also for Windows, so that's pretty nice. So there you go. This was the book from top to end. Now let's talk a little bit about should you buy the book, should you not buy the book. Um, I think for the value that the book has, it's really good. It's, I think, 45 euros when you buy it. So there is a ton of material in here, so I think it's really worth the money uh, to spend it on the book. Another thing that I want to say though is that you probably find a lot of these things that are shown in here as uh, free YouTube videos. So if you want to save money, if you're short on cash, probably look on YouTube. I think the book may be a bit more uh, professional than some YouTube videos about that. And um, also some people like to learn more from a book because you have the book on the desk and then you have the project on the screen so you don't have to switch back and forward between the video and the uh, software. So this is more relaxing and it's, it's combining all these different techniques. You can look them up. So this is a huge benefit. Uh, what I would say is this is uh, for beginners and uh, immediate medium users basically it's a good choice um, if you're more professional than that probably the things in here are too basic uh, to to learn but if you're starting out or if you're in the middle of your um, journey to be a good photographer a good uh, photo editing person this book can give you a lot of interesting projects uh, to look into uh, let's talk about some downsides uh, something that I didn't like too much about the book is first of all there is no PDF version, there is no digital version so um, I, I know from my channel there is a lot of also people like all the people, not all the people, but you know what I mean, where your eyesight starts to get bad and I'm like 41 and my eyesight starts to get worse. So for me, the font already in here is a little bit small. Um, so I would like to have a PDF version where I can zoom into, I can load onto my uh, Kindle and look on my uh, tablet. Uh, so I can use it like a book, but I can zoom into it. That is nice. And um, one thing, maybe that's a bit uh, nitpicking, but 
uh, let's find a page where this is the case, like here. This is one thing I, sh I think shouldn't really be in the book. I understand it should be good design and layout and stuff like that, but there's a lot of these white spaces in here. Not a lot, but there are some of these white spaces and I think maybe you should have used it for some more text or something. So I, I understand for the creative um, part that in design and layout you want to have, and this is called negative space because it's empty, uh, gives more freedom, it feels more relaxing, stuff like that, so you don't want to crush uh, every page with information. Um, so yeah, it's it's a choice. So yeah. Um, other than that, um, I think, well, I think it's a good choice. I think it's a good choice to get the book and I think you could probably follow up and this is also advertisement for myself right here. If you get more pro or you want to go deeper into a topic, let's go maybe for Udemy or for Skillshare, stuff like that. I will soon start to put videos on there uh, and those are several hours long, so really going deep and giving more information than uh, the basics. But a book is still good. I like books. The smell of the book, the touch of the book, you have it in front of you, so it's it's a little more soothing, relaxing. You can write your own notes into the book, so there's a lot that speaks positively about having a book um, on your desk to learn from. So I think the 45 euros are really well invested and it's a really creative, interesting book. And this is also an important part. These have been created by different authors who are all very great and achieved photographers and designers. And this is why the book is so beautiful and inspirational and also like artistic guiding. So it gives you kind of an idea how a good version of that should look because I have to say a lot of the video tutorials out there, they give you some crappy results that are uh, guiding you in the wrong direction or they are not looking very good. Some of my videos too, so my older videos, I some of them I want to redo because now I think like I could have done better. I should be more inspirational to you. I have like this responsibility to give you the best stuff and uh, guide you in the right artistic direction. And this book is doing that because there's really great examples in there. Okay, that was the review. I hope you enjoyed it. And the next review for the Affinity Designer book is coming soonish. Uh, by the way, tell me in the comments if you want me to do some Affinity Designer tutorials, um, which also would enable me to do a combination of Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo in one project. There can be done some really cool stuff. Okay, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next episode or the next tutorial and bye.